All right, so I'm going to try and explain the advanced installation for Athena and why you guys should probably be using this. Um, a regular clone of the repository and then making changes on it is going to actually have some issues when you start really getting in depth with your own game mode and adding your own features and things like that. It's going to make it a nightmare to manage it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a bare clone of the Athena repository. So what that means is I'm basically creating a private fork of this repository here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a PowerShell or a Git bash or whatever. And I'm just going to clone it. You know, I'm going to paste that command in here. And, you know, it's going to create this file or this folder called LV Athena Bear. All right. Now what I need to do is I need to create a repository for this private fork. So if I go over to... Uh, GitHub here, and I create a new one, and I'm going to call it Alt V Athena uh, Private. Oh, I guess I already have that. Okay, so we'll do Private Fork. Um, so this, I'm just going to add a description. It doesn't matter. I'm going to throw it on Private, and I'm not going to hit any of these. Okay, and I'm going to do Create Repository. Okay. Now, following this guide here that we have for the advanced, um, what we need to do is we need to open this folder and we need to open a PowerShell here. So if I hit shift and right click, I can open a PowerShell. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I need to do a git push mirror and then my GitHub URL, okay? So I'm gonna copy this, this, uh, this git here. So you can either do git or HTTPS. I highly recommend that you set up SSH. So if you don't know how to do that, please go Google how to set up SSH for GitHub. It's very useful. It'll save you like so much time. <laughs> um, so we're gonna take the code here and we're gonna push it to this private repository. So if we do git push mirror, right? And then I'm inside the Alt V Athena bear folder here, right? And if I hit enter, it's gonna go ahead and push that up for me. Okay, so we're gonna give that just a moment. And we are, there we go, we pushed up. All right, so if we refresh this, we'll actually see all of these wonderful things in here. Um, we have a whole bunch of different branches and stuff. Ignore all of this, it's it's irrelevant. Um, so if we go to master here, you know, we'll see all the different things inside of this and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so inside of settings, what you wanna do is make sure that you are setting the main branch to master. I'm trying to remember where exactly that is. It's probably under branches. Yeah, so let's change this to, um, let's see, the default branch is considered base. So we're gonna want to switch to another branch. Let's change that to master update. I understand, there we go. Perfect. All right. So now this is up to date with our current uh, iteration of Athena. So this is the master branch. This was updated very, very recently. And this has all the stuff that, you know, I need. Um, so what I can do now is I can delete this repository or not the repository, but this folder here, we're going to delete it. We don't need it. So now we have our private repository here. So what we can do is every time that we clone this down, so we're gonna copy this URL in here, since it's the private version. And we're gonna go to bash, hit clone, paste that here, boom. All right, so now we have it down here in uh, in a folder. So we'll go cd alt athena dash private dash fork. I'm gonna open this up in VS Code. All right, excellent. So now we have this all set up. I'm gonna open a terminal, so control and back tick, because <clears throat> I still need it. Still got some things I gotta do here. Uh, so every time you clone it down from your private repository here, what you're gonna need to do is set up a few things. Um, so we've just done the clone and now we need to set up the upstream for the main repository, okay? So this is where we're gonna be pulling changes from. So if I uh, copy this here and then I paste it here, it's gonna set that up and then I'm gonna do uh, git remote set URL push upstream disable and you know, both of those are now resolved. So what I can do in this private fork is let's say that I'm on, um, uh, let's say that I'm on git, I wanna say branch 1.50, check out 150. Okay, so we're on branch 150, my private repository. Um, 
what I want to do is like, let's say in 150 that I had a bunch of changes, okay? So we're just gonna do a general assumption of here of what that kind of means. So like, let's say inside of extensions here, um, I don't know, I had something in here like a comment, it had some text in here. And then like, let's say that inside of interfaces, I made some changes to the account. So it has like whatever, and it has like some data and some whatever stuff here. You know, we have some general changes that are uh, basically put in here, okay? So we have these changes in here, and what we wanna do is, uh, like if we want to pull the data from Athena itself, like let's say Athena just had an update and I wanna be like, oh shit, it just, it just had an update in master. Like I wanna, I kinda wanna pull that data down. So what I can do is I can do a git fetch upstream. Okay, and that's gonna populate with all the new changes, the branches, whatever. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull from upstream master. Okay, and it's gonna say, hey, please commit your changes or stash them before the merge. So here's the thing. The beautiful thing about having a private fork is what I can do is I can take my changes right now and I can do git add and then a period and it's gonna add all of my changes. And I'm gonna create a commit. So I'm gonna do git commit dash M. I'm gonna give it a message, my changes. Okay, and now I've added those and I've added my commit. Okay, so now I don't have any like other changes that are kind of showing inside of here. Like they're, they're not like green or blue or whatever in the sidebar here. I mean, this one's blue because it's a sub module. So now what I can do is actually pull the upstream from master. So what that's doing is taking the code from the main repository and pulling it into my current repository. And because I have this git stuff, um, because I added it and I made a commit, I can now merge in additional changes that are from the master branch, okay? So if I do git pull upstream master, it's gonna pull all that down. And if you see, um, we have uh, automatic merge failed, fix conflicts, and then commit results. So this is what's called a merge conflict. So if we look at extensions here, it looks like there's something in here that says, hey, um, this is weird. Like we found something here that's kind of like, uh, it looks like it's your code, but it's also um, the new code that's coming in. Um, so what that means is my current change, this is the stuff that I added, okay? So what I need to do is I need to accept both of these and then I need to figure out what I need, okay? So if I'm accepting both of these, I just want this comment and I want this new code in here with it as well. That's it. And that's how you uh, merge in new changes into your current fork with all of your changes. And that's kind of how that works. So once you're done like updating it, you can do like git add, you do git commit m fix merge conflicts and then you can push that up to uh, your private branch so if you do git, do git push origin 150 it's going to push that up to the private fork so now 150 is now actually up to date uh, with the master branch so if you can see we have like things from a couple of hours ago and all that sort of stuff. And as you can see, we have 16 seconds ago. So this is how you actually maintain your code base, your custom code base, while there are additional changes happening on the main uh, Athena branch. It's a little complicated. It's, a, it's got a little bit of a learning curve, but this is gonna be the easiest way for you to add your own changes without losing them because you're gonna be pushing them up to a private repository that you can pull from uh, when you uh, need to go into production with your server. So I really do hope this actually makes some sense and kind of puts some light on how to do your, um, like how to manage your code base with Athena and while having like the main Athena branch, uh, you know, all the master updates that I'm performing and you guys want to add your own changes and that sort of stuff. So I hope this makes sense. But in, in that regard, uh, I think that's pretty much it for this.